Now, can you put your hand up if you know the answers to these quick questions? Why are we here at Steve Rock Bay Bible Camp this week? Anybody know why we're here? Not sure? Are you here for the swimming? No. Who's here for the swimming? Yeah. I am. Yeah. Who's here for the archery? Who's here for doing dishes? You know what? You don't have to do dishes this year. Did you know that? Yeah, Ben. Ben's doing all the dishes. Everybody give it up for Ben. Woo! No dishes this year. Okay. How many of you are here for sniper? Playing sniper? The golf ball thing? Yeah. Girls, are you not here for any of those things? Who's here for doing the crafts and the bracelets and everything? Oh, there we go. I knew we'd get some girls in there. Awesome. I'm glad you're coming for, to camp for all those fun things. But we are also here at camp for a really big important thing. And that is to learn about God. And, and God, learning about God is, I hope, just as fun. Because that's the most important thing in your life that you can learn about is God. Um, you'll have crafts, you'll have swimming, you'll have archery, all different places in your life. And God will be in every aspect of your life too. And so I'm hoping to share a little bit with you this week and uh, give you a little bit better information about God and, and you can uh, know God better and decide whether you want God in your life or not. Hopefully yes, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna read a book today and I have permission to use this book and we're gonna read it together. I'll read the Bible passages on the bottom, uh, but I want you to know that just because this book has sort of cartoon comic pages, uh, doesn't mean that this is just a comic book or a cartoon book or a fake story. Um, that this, this, what we're gonna tell you today is all true. And as we get further down in the story, what we're gonna hear about Jesus is actually from eyewitness accounts, people who saw it firsthand. Okay, and so it's really important that we know that this is a true story, not just a comic book, not just a myth or a legend, that it's actually true. So we're going to read it together, and on the bottom of each page you'll see there's a Bible verse, just to show you that this is not something somebody made up, it comes from the Bible. And the Bible's been around a long time. So. Let's start from the top. Everybody together? God made everything. Now, it has the whole world there. It says the whole world. But God made everything around the world, too. All the planets, all the stars, all the universe, everything. And on the bottom it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.1. If you have a Bible, even if you go home tonight and check your Bible out, this is going to be the very first verse in your Bible. Genesis 1-1, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, let's read the top together. One, two, here we go. God created Adam and Eve. And the Bible verse that goes with that is God created man in his own image. And he made us very, very special. He said to, when he wanted to create trees, he said, let there be trees. When he wanted to create dogs and cats and animals, let there be dogs and cats and animals. But when he created you and me, he created us very specially. He formed us with his hands and he breathed his own life into us. So we're not, we're not just animals, we're very, very special. We're made in God's image. Okay, so read the top. They were very happy. And the Bible verse that goes with it, God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. Thank you. If you want to read along, that's good. I just know it's small and fuzzy here. So Genesis 1.31. Everything God made was good. Even you guys. Okay? Now, read the top. God gave them a rule. He said, do not eat the fruit of the tree. Now, how many rules did they have? No. God gave them a rule. They had one rule to follow. Doesn't that sound easy? Yeah. How many rules do you have at home? 
Don't lock with your shoes in the house. Don't jump on your bed. Clean up after yourself. Take the garbage out. Do the dishes. Right? Do you have all those rules at home? Yeah. yeah. What about school? Don't wear your hat. Do your homework. Sit nice. Be quiet. Don't punch each other. Don't bully each other. Right? Lots of rules at school, right? But God gave Adam and Eve only one rule. Easy peasy, right? You think? And then on the Bible verse it says, of the tree you shall not eat. There was one tree in the garden that he made for Adam and Eve and said, don't eat off that tree. Everything else, go for it. But not that tree. One rule. Read it with me. Adam and Eve disobeyed God. They ate the fruit. Disobeying God is called sin. It's, it's called sin too if you disobey your mom and dad and if you disobey the school rules. That's all sin too. Sin is just another word for disobeying. But everything we do that's disobeying eventually offends God. It's, we're doing it against God. So when mom and dad say it's time to go to bed, shut your games off, and you go, wait! And you're disobeying mom and dad, that's also disobeying God too. Okay, let's keep going. Sin ruined everything. Because of sin, bad things happen. You see what's with the problem with that lady there? What's wrong with that lady? <laughs> yeah, what is that? You guys get those still sometimes. Chicken pox or maybe she just has zits, right? I don't know. And then there's a lion eating a bone. As far as we understand, lions didn't kill anything before, before sin entered the world, before Adam and Eve screwed things up, right? And look at the guy here. He's got toes. And you notice they're wearing clothes now. Okay, so now, just like what happens at home, if you stay out too late and you don't come home when your mom and dad say come home, what happens to you usually? You might get a spanking. Somebody said it over here. Gra yeah. Grounded. So instead of coming home early for one day, now you don't get to go out for like the next two weeks, right? So it, the rules get bigger and get more and rules and rules and rules because you disobeyed one rule, right? So same thing with Adam and Eve. Now God gave us ten commandments to show how we should live. So to show us how we should live. You guys are reading better than me. Awesome. And the Bible verse, these are the words which the Lord has commanded you to do. Does anybody know all the Ten Commandments? Uh, yeah. Good, good, Katie, good. <laughs> yeah. Thou shalt what? Does anybody know any of the Ten Commandments? No. Hmm. Say it again. Behave yourself. Well, it's all about behaving yourself, but it's not. That's not particularly one. But don't worry, we're going to go over those uh, tomorrow, I think. But yeah, now instead of one rule, now they have ten rules. Yeah. See, that's what happens when you don't listen. Okay, read it together. No matter how hard we try, we all break God's commandments. Now, some of God's commandments are like, do not lie. How many people have lied before? Even a teeny tiny little lie, yeah? Everybody should have their hand up because everybody's told to lie. That's why God made it a rule because he knows everybody's going to do it. How many people have said wait to your mom and dad? Yeah, when they said like, come on over here and you go, wait. Yeah, me too. That's, that's not honoring your mom and dad. That's one of the Ten Commandments. How many people have murdered somebody? No, that's too crazy. That is too crazy. But you know, I'll tell you about this more tomorrow. But it says in the Bible, if you hate somebody, is there somebody you've ever hated, really been mad at? Have you ever been mad at somebody? Mad at your teacher? Mad at your mom and dad? Mad at your baby sister and brother who took your stuff? The Bible does tell us that if we really hate somebody, ah! that we're actually like killing them in our heart. We're not really killing them with a knife or a gun, but we're killing them in our heart. So 
Yeah, we all sin. We all do bad stuff. We don't always want to talk about it, but we all do it. Let's see if it just goes one. Okay, this one got cut off a little bit. Because God loves us so much, he made a way for us to be forgiven. Have you guys ever needed somebody to forgive you? When you've done something bad and you feel really bad about it and you say sorry? And do you want that person to be your friend again now that you've said sorry? Yeah, and so forgiven, that's forgiveness. When, when somebody says, when you say sorry and you really mean it and they say, that's okay, thanks for saying sorry. That's forgiveness. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John 3, 16. That's a very popular verse in the Bible. You've probably heard it before. Let's keep going. So now this is the part when, where we have eyewitness accounts. People who are writing this part of the story actually saw this happening. Okay, so God sent, uh, read it with me. God sent his son into the world to be born as a baby. And on the Bible verse it says, God sent forth his son, Galatians 4.4. 4. Does anybody know what time of year we celebrate that baby being born? Christmas. Yeah, bingo, Christmas, exactly. That's why we celebrate Christmas. Okay, his name was? Jesus. Jesus. Mary will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. So Mary didn't even get to pick the name. God told Mary what to name the baby. Read it with me. Jesus grew up. His parents were proud of him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. And Luke 2.40. Okay, everybody together. This is a real important one. Jesus always loved God and obeyed Him. And obeyed. Do you know what that word means, obey? It means listening to your parents and your teacher and everybody. And because Jesus loved God, He obeyed God. And He obeyed His parents and He obeyed His elders. Okay, whoops. Everybody together. He was very loving to others. So he never bullied anybody. He was very kind. He was very generous. He was good to everybody. Jesus said, as the Father loved me, I have also loved you. So he's showing love to everybody because God loved him and because he loved God. That's a big point. Okay, again, like I said, this is not a fairy story. This is not a, not a myth, not a legend. This was eyewitness. When they wrote this down in the Bible, the person who saw it wrote it down. He didn't tell his second cousin's brother's wife, uh, third time removed, person down the lane. He, he knew it, right? He saw it happen. Read it with me. Jesus did amazing things. He walked on the water. And then in the Bible it says, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And look at the sea. Does it look really calm and nice? It looks really wavy. So walking on the water seems like it would be pretty hard, but even harder if it was all wavy like that, eh? So God, Jesus was doing amazing miracles. Okay, read it with me. He healed sick people. What do you guys do now when you go to the doctor? I mean, when you're sick, you go to the doctor. Oh, gave the answer. Uh, sometimes the doctor gives you pills, right? Sometimes the doctor has to open you up and fix you up and sew you back up again, right? In those days, they didn't have pills like that. They didn't have doctors that could cut, cut you open, take out the bad stuff, and then sew you up again. Or they didn't have doctors that could fix your leg if you broke it. But Jesus was able to fix people. He made people who never could see in their whole life, he made them see. He, made, he helped people or made people well that could never walk in their life. And he could heal them. He was better than a doctor even. He taught us more about God's Ten Commandments. Jesus talked a lot about God's Ten Rules. Logan, even Ben, even Freddie, and even me, we have all sinned. None of us were perfect. 
But only Jesus was the perfect one. Okay, together. Remember, each of us has broken God's commandments. I just said that. Many times, we deserve to be punished. God's place of punishment is called hell. That's a pretty scary place. Have you guys heard about that? Does anybody want to go there? No, neither do I. That's, it's a nasty, nasty place. Just like when we were talking about how if you go out late at night and you don't come home when your mom and dad tell you, you get a spanking or you get grounded. Well, God's punishment is hell. He doesn't want to do that, but he keeps his word. He promises that if you're disobedient. Okay, but this is the good news. That was the bad news. Hell is the bad news. But here's the good news. God doesn't want us to go to hell. And so, read it with me. But Jesus took the punishment for our sins. That's like saying, Mom's going to spank you because he came home late. And Jesus says, hey, wait a minute, spank me instead. Wouldn't that be cool? If you didn't have to get spanked? What if you were grounded for about a week? And, and Jesus steps in and says, hey, excuse me, Mom, I'll, I'll take the grounding. I'll do the grounding for you. Would you like that to happen? What about if you were in detention after school? And your teacher said you have to stay after school and finish your work. And Jesus comes up and says, oh, I'll finish your work for you. I'll stay after school for you. That's what Jesus did on the cross. He took our punishment. We deserve to go to hell, and Jesus took that on the cross. God demonstrates his own love towards us. He did that because he loved us. In that while we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. That's amazing. That's so amazing. He was nailed to a cross. It was a, it was a killer, brutal thing to do. They put hand, nails in his hands and nails in his feet and nailed him till that, to that cross until he died. And the, the, there's a red spot on his chest. That's where they stabbed him to see if he was really dead or not. Pretty brutal, eh? Okay, Jesus, read it with me. This is part of the good news. Jesus died for the whole world. That means he died for all the people in SAP, all the people, not just the kids, all the people in SAP, all the people in Norway House, all the people in Swan River, all the people in the PA, everybody. He died for everyone. See? And it says there in the Bible, Jesus died for all. 2 Corinthians 2.15. Now, this is the cool thing. This is what proves that Jesus is, is God. Jesus, when he died on the cross, like I said, they stabbed him in the chest to see if he was really dead. They put him in a tomb. In those days, they put him in rocks, in hollowed out caves. They didn't put him in the ground. He actually came out three days later. He actually came alive again. Nobody in the entire world has ever done something like that. There's lots of people that say they've, they've risen people from the dead, but he's the only one that rose himself from the dead. That's what makes him worthy to follow and to listen to and to, and to uh, learn more about. If we turn, read it with me, if we turn from our sins, and trust Jesus, God will forgive us. That's right. We can't just go, oh, cool, I like Jesus, he's going to save me, but I'm going to go rob, I'm going to go to the store and steal some candy. Okay? We have to decide that I love God more than stealing candy. I love God more than saying, wait to my mom and dad. And when we turn away from all those bad things and we turn towards God, that's when we are forgiven and, and he, we become his children. Okay? Whoever believes in Jesus will receive forgiveness of sin. Acts 10, 43. And that's a promise from God. If you go to God and you truly want him to forgive you, and you truly ask him with a sorry heart, he's going to forgive you. 
He's never going to say to you, oh, you did that? I'm not going to forgive that. That's too bad. God will never say that to you. If you really mean it, he will always forgive you. No questions. Okay? But you can't go out, oh, I'm going to go steal some candy. Oh, God, I'm really sorry. Is he going to forgive that? No. If you steal candy and just figure you ask God for forgiveness later, that ain't going to work. But when you find out you've done something wrong and you're really sorry for it, God forgives that all the time. When we, read it with me, when we obey God's commandments, we show that we love Him. That's, this is a really interesting thing to, to know. Because a lot of people think you got to be good to go to heaven. That's not it. The reason that people who love God do good things, it's because they love God. Not because they're trying to get to heaven but because they love God, because God's already promised them heaven. Okay, so this we'll talk more about this later this week too. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love your mom and dad, you'll respect what they say and you won't say wait to them. If you love your teacher or you love your school, I know sometimes we don't always love our teacher, but if you love your school and you love going to school, and I know, have you guys been out of school since March too? Did anybody go to school for the last couple of months? No, we've all been out of school, eh? Who's, who would really like to go back to school in September? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, teachers want to see you back at school too. If you love your school, if you love going to school, respect your teachers. That shows that you love them. <coughs> Everybody together. I think this is the last one. God will never leave you. And on the bottom, the Bible verse says, God has said, I will never leave you. Hebrews 13, 5. That's a promise right from the mouth of God. He's not going to ditch you. Never, never will ditch you. Through your whole life. Jesus will be your friend for life. And that's the same thing. He'll never ditch you. One day, we can go to heaven to live with God forever. And on the bottom, Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. Does anybody know what a mansion is? It's a killer big house like actors and actresses live in. But God's going to build a mansion even better than that. And he's built it for all the people who love God and who follow him. He's not going to build it for people who don't want God. There's a lot of people, sadly, in the world just don't want anything to do with God. And God's not going to force them to come with him if they don't want him here. He's not going to make them go there, right? I go to prepare a place for you. So that's what Jesus is doing. After he rose from the dead, he went back up to heaven. And now he's preparing a place for all the people, all the kids, all the adults, all the grandparents, all the elders. Whoever wants to follow Jesus will have a place in heaven with him. And that, I think, is the end of our presentation. So we're going to talk more about different things of this story, different parts of the story, like the Ten Commandments and stuff, so that you can understand them better. If you have questions, I really like that you guys put your hands up nicely and ask questions. And being polite, you're sitting nice and listening, it's going to be really hard to choose who gets a prize today because you guys are all really, really awesome.